program. An investigation for this program has found that animal welfare is being neglected on long journeys across Europe amid a booming livestock trade. We found livestock hauliers routinely breaking EU laws for the protection of animals in transit. Animal rights groups are calling for a ban on journeys of more than eight hours. Our reporter John Ironmonger has spent time on the Turkish-Bulgarian border witnessing some of the conditions animals experience as they're transported out of the EU. This film contains some strong and upsetting images, including those of dead animals, and it lasts around 16 minutes. Today, there is a growing global appetite for a controversial export. Live animals. Sheep, cattle and pigs in particular. And the UK, along with the rest of Europe, is catching in. But long journeys in stifling, crowded lorries can take a toll on living cargo. Do you think animals die every summer at the border? This is for sure. 100%. And we've seen evidence of widespread welfare issues. This is the big problem, I think. It's cruelty to animals! Campaigners are calling for a ban. But lawmakers aren't convinced. The main issue is enforcement of law. Main issue is control. It's early morning near the port of Ramsgate in Kent, and these local activists are waiting for the latest shipment of livestock. The port here is one of the main trade routes for animals leaving the UK. In late summer, there are protests and animal trucks every week. Do you think it is correct that animals should travel thousands of miles merely to have their throats cut? These trucks belong to companies from the Netherlands, Ireland and Northern Ireland. On board, there are more than 2,000 sheep from Carlisle in Cumbria. We don't like it. We don't want it to go on. We're sick we of the hills, It's cruelty to no, animals. Bro. We don't have to do this to eat meat. They can be slaughtered here, more local, and transported as meat. Where are these trucks going? Initially into France and Belgium, one would assume. Um, from there on in, they could literally go anywhere, as far as Turkey. It has been known, British sheep as far as Turkey. The trade in live animals is growing. British cattle, sheep and pig exports have tripled in value over the past five years. And across Europe, livestock shipments are a major lucrative industry. British and European exports of live cattle and sheep were worth more than 4 billion euros last year, while live exports to non-EU countries have increased in value by 50% since 2012. Exports of livestock from Britain are currently controlled by EU laws, which the UK is expected to adopt post-Brexit. But there is wide support for a ban. So what impact does long-distance transport really have on the welfare of animals? I'm going to the edge of Europe to find out, to Capitan Andrevo in Bulgaria, where every year hundreds of thousands of animals cross into Turkey. Animals, potentially, from as far as Britain. Well, it's a hot day in Bulgaria. The sun is blazing. We're here with Martin, our driver. And we're heading to the Bulgarian border. But first, we're going to try to stop at a stables where many of the truck drivers offload their animals. This staging point is just a couple of miles from the border. You can see all of the animal trucks. Some of the animals here have been traveling for more than 24 hours already. And this is the last chance to rest them at a stables before they enter Turkey. This staging point is closely guarded, and we weren't allowed to see the animals. But we didn't have to wait long. 
At the border, there are dozens of transporters stuck in queues that stretch for miles. Temperatures today are pushing 40 Celsius, and this seems to be showing. The bull lying down in this truck is hyperventilating heavily. How far have you come? Where have you come from? From Germany, Spain, from Bulgaria, Slovakia. User has travelled nearly a thousand miles to get here, but tells me he rested his animals at a stables last night. Most of the drivers are bemused by our concern. Animals are a commodity to them. Animal welfare an inconvenience. After all, why protect a life that's been earmarked for slaughter? Some of these trucks have been travelling for 24 hours, maybe one or two thousand miles from Germany, Spain, even the UK potentially. And when they get to the border, there's another four hour wait at the very least before they're processed and then can continue on their journey into Turkey, the Middle East and beyond. Laws for the protection of animals during transport act on all exports from Europe and the UK, even those to third countries. Journeys should be as short as possible and undertaken without delay. Detailed travel plans should be provided. Animals must be fit to travel and vehicles should meet welfare standards with sufficient floor height and space. It's thought the government will adopt similar, if not tougher, laws when Britain leaves the EU. I have a meeting at the border with an independent investigator, arranged by Compassion in World Farming, which has campaigned for decades on the issue of live animal transport. Christine Hafner keeps a close check on livestock passing into Turkey, and she and her colleague have agreed to share some of their footage with us. We do find infringements in, in many trucks. But uh, one point is for sure that the, that the journey times are very often exceeded. And uh, also the loading density, there are often too many animals on board. Very often they are transported at temperatures above 35 degrees, even though this would be forbidden or is forbidden by EU legislation. For example, yesterday we followed a truck with, um, with sheep that were transported on four decks. Mm. So they really couldn't stand in their normal position and they were with their heads and with their backs touching the, the ceiling so there was no way any ventilation could go through. There were 500 sheep, um, so of course if, if you're forced to stay for, for many many hours if not days on a truck at 35 or more, more degrees and there's no ventilation going through, this is of course... Um, it's an oven. Yeah, exactly, it's an oven. And sheep in general, they are transported worse. Um, I always think because their monetary worth is, is lower. Yeah. yeah, so they don't mind if a few sheep die, potentially. Yeah. Do you think animals die every summer at the border? This is for sure. Next morning, we're heading into Turkey. More transporters are queuing at the border. Bulls from the Czech Republic. This one has an eye condition, aggravated by the heat and transit. A mile into Turkey, we stop at a garage full of transporters. These cattle are parked in direct sunshine, but there's no water in the drinkers. Christine and her colleague tell me the driver of this truck travelled for more than 30 hours to get here, and that he admitted freely to breaking the law by stopping for a long sleep en route. They're very often stopping at this gas station or at other gas stations. Um, when we ask them what they actually do, they're always stay waiting for papers. Sometimes it goes quick, just an hour or two, but sometimes this can last also very long. But there's a stables at the back of this garage. Yeah, there are stables. So why, why isn't the driver offloading these animals? Well, most probably, we can ask him, I would be curious what he says. Most probably would say it's not necessary. But it is simply not necessary because nobody's checking this yet. Nobody is, is checking whether the, the journey times and the rest periods are applied as soon as the animals um, enter Turkey. I ask around about what's causing the delays. Not even this customs officer can give me a clear answer. But what is clear is that the Turkish state is taking a keen interest in these imports, imposing its own taxes and red tape. Apparently deals are done here too, 
and there are more holdups while buyers haggle over prices. If they have to wait here for many hours, sometimes a day, for reason of animal welfare, they should unload them because it's very hot, it's crowded in the truck. That's for this reason they should unload them. Actually, the law says if after two hours of delay, um, the problem is not resolved, the animals need to be accommodated off the truck. Um, but this simply never happened. You don't have to spend long at this garage to find animals in pain or distress. This heifer from Lithuania has severe breeding problems. It's possible she won't survive for much longer. On another lorry, this bull appears exhausted, trodden on and beaten. He should stand instinctively. Finally, he climbs to his feet. The day after we left Turkey, Christine's colleague filmed this dead bull. She found it on the top deck of a transporter here. Christine checks the journey logs of each transporter. She shows me that where we are in Capicool is routinely recorded as the place of destination. But in reality, the animals begin new journeys here, arranged ad hoc to slaughterhouses hundreds of miles away in Ankara, Istanbul and beyond. By law, they should be offloaded for 48 hours before travelling to a new destination, but that simply doesn't happen here. There are lorries here carrying heifers and bulls that have been waiting more than 15 hours to get the clearance to travel further into Turkey. In theory, EU welfare laws should remain in effect for the duration of their journey, but the end of the road for these animals is uncertain, unchecked and can be brutal. Hiya. Slaughterhouses in Turkey and the Middle East are unregulated. Recent investigations have exposed inhumane treatment and methods that are banned in Europe. We're returning to Bulgaria. At the border, we spot a truck with sheep packed over four floors. We saw it 10 hours ago when we first crossed into Turkey. The following night, nearly 30 hours later, we discover it still hasn't moved. So it's 11 o'clock now on Sunday night. I've just had a call from Christine, the investigator, who's between the Turkish and Bulgaria border. She's with two trucks full of sheep. Uh, they've been standing there for three days now, and the manager of the shipping company has come down. Apparently, he's said to be desperate, so we're going to head down there now and see if we can talk to him. The manager of the trucks wants to return the sheep to Bulgaria, but first he needs permission from the border vet. Hello. Hi, Christine. It's John. Hi. Where are the sheep trucks now? Are they coming back into Bulgaria? No. And how are the sheep now? We approach the border on foot and head to an area near the first checkpoint, but must be very cautious to film here. When we meet the manager, he's been unable to break the deadlock and is worried about provoking Turkish customs. We've agreed not to show his face. This is the big problem, I think. Do you know what's happened? Do you know the reason they can't? No, no. I can speak, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. What, does, you... what does the driver tell you? Nothing. Nothing. So usually when the trucks are stuck at the border, sooner or later they have to solve the problem, but this can be later, not sooner. Have you seen something like this before? Yeah. You have? Yeah. The same, the same system where, for some reason, the truck won't be allowed into Turkey, so it sits here, yeah. like a limbo land? Exactly, and nobody knows where to go. Not, not forward, not back. This is not the first time I see this. What do you think will happen? In the end? Well, in the end, they will keep on dying. I mean, even not more will die. The following night, after four full days, without proper food and water, the sheep are finally allowed into Turkey and offloaded. They appear frantic and caked in filth. At least one sheep is dead inside the truck. The Bulgarian border authority told us that this consignment met legal requirements and that the delay was the result of a decision taken by Turkish customs. 
We contacted the Romania Al Naro's transport company, but they didn't respond. Across Europe, and especially the UK, there is wide public support for a change in the law on live animal transport. In particular, a ban on journeys of more than eight hours. Europe is divided over the issue of animal transport, weighing up the lucrative demand for exports with the widespread concerns for animal welfare. So what else, if anything, can be done to find a balance? I've come to Brussels to meet the man chiefly responsible. There are a number of laws acting for the protection of animals in transport. How well are those EU laws working, do you think? Yes, we have, from my point of view, we have enough of laws because some ask us to provide new laws, for example, to speaking about the uh, introduction of uh, limits of hours. But main issue is enforcement of laws. Main issue is control. Main issue is level of, and quality of official control. Main issue is education of all operators who are involved in life animal transportation. UK MPs in the past have blamed Europe for not being able to ban the long distance transport of animals. Oh, but, but if I may, it's a very complex issue because it's a lot of factors. It's not only one, not only ours. Animal welfare standards must be respected. Doesn't matter. You are transporting eight hours or 11 hours or six hours. The UK government refused to be interviewed. It told us it would look at options to limit journey times for live animals after leaving Europe, though animal rights campaigners are sceptical. The transport of live animals has profound challenges, with policing, with animal suffering. But the trucks keep coming, and the value of this trade keeps rising. No one from the animal...